Hello to everyone. This is Viewpoint on Loyan Tapan TV, and I am Benjamin Bogosian, Senior Research Fellow at APRI Armenia. Today, we will discuss the recent development in Armenia Azerbaijan peace negotiations, but in particular, the US involvement and the US actions. Only a few days ago, United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken called Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev. According to official statement, which was re released after the call, President Blinken urged President Aliyev to sign peace agreement with Armenia as soon as possible. Even we can say President Aliyev was urged to sign peace agreement with Armenia almost immediately. Then, of course, President Aliyev pushed forward his own narrative, telling that if we want peace, first of all, Armenia should amend or change its constitution and other laws. But however, why United States is interested to have peace agreement signed as soon as possible? Of course, the very clear answer could be United States is interested in stable, prosperous and peaceful South Caucasus. And no one can argue that this is not the case, but this is not the only reason. United States understands that for its goal to weaken Russia everywhere in post-Soviet space, including the South Caucasus, United States needs Armenia-Azerbaijan peace agreement, but the most important thing is Armenia-Turkey normalization. Without Armenia-Turkey normalization, without opening Armenia-Turkey border, Armenia, even if Armenia wants, cannot move away from Russia. It's simply impossible for Armenia to start its movement away from Russia, even slow movement away, away from Russia, as far as there is a status quo in Armenia-Turkey relations. Status quo, which emerged immediately after 1991 and was solidified in April 1993, when Turkey firmly and fully closed its border with Armenia. So, as far as President Erdogan's statements and vision is very clear, Turkey will normalize its relation with Armenia only after Turkey will get a phone call from President Aliyev telling that I got from Armenia everything which I wanted, so now you can move forward with your normalization with Armenia. As far as there is a no such call from Baku, Ankara, at least under the leadership of President Erdogan, which means that at least under 2028, will do nothing on Armenia-Turkey normalization. And definitely, this is not in line with United States strategic and vital interests, which are, first of all, as I mentioned, to weaken Russian presence and influence in all post-Soviet space, including South Caucasus. If Armenia-Turkey normalization moves forward, then it will be another blow to Russian presence in South Caucasus, it will increase of Turkish presence in the South Caucasus, and also it will open the way for Turkey to be more securely connected with Azerbaijan via Armenia. Let's not forget that all the talk about the restoration of communication, when Azerbaijan wants extraterritorial corridor, while Armenia says that, okay, I have the idea of crossroads of peace, I am ready to open all borders, all roads, all highways, including many highways or railways which will connect Turkey with Azerbaijan, but only if these railways and highways are under the Armenian control. However, from the United States perspective, it's not a big difference who controls what. The key is to have more secure Turkey-Azerbaijan connection, which then will allow Turkey to jump into Central Asia and Turkish involvement, growing involvement in Central Asia. Because at the end of the day, Turkey enters Central Asia immediately after the collapse of the Soviet Union, but Turkish growing involvement in the Central Asia, covered with the organization of Turkic state banner, may create problems both for Russia and China. And both these countries, Russia and China, are systemic rivals of the United States, and in all the US national security strategy documents, they are called as the US adversaries. And probably soon we will see that Russia will call even enemy, given the confrontation between Russia and the West and ongoing war in Ukraine. So, the United States is needs peace in South Caucasus to weaken Russian presence here, because the United States hopes that peace in South Caucasus, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia Turkey normalization will open the way for Armenia to move away from Russia. Also, it will provide Turkey more connection with Turkey, with Azerbaijan, and then via Azerbaijan with Central Asia, which again will provide Turkey possibilities to create problems in Central Asia for both Russia and China. And that is why we see how much effort the United States put on Armenia-Azerbaijan peace negotiations. US 
actively jumped into the negotiations starting from summer 2022, immediately after Azerbaijan's September 2022 aggression against Armenia. United States significantly increased its involvement with a negotiation in Washington, meetings between Secretary of Security Council of Armenia and Foreign Policy Advisor to President of Azerbaijan. Then in 2023, two rounds of extended negotiations between Azerbaijan and the Armenian Ministry of Foreign Affairs team, May 2023, June 2023. And let's remember how many signals we received from the United States. First, in late 2022, that peace agreement between Armenia and Azerbaijan is imminent by the end of 2022. Then, immediately after the military takeover of Azerbaijan, military takeover by Azerbaijan of Nagorno-Karabakh, and for displacement of all Armenians, a lot of signals from the United States that peace agreement should be signed by the end of 2023. Both momentum were lost due to Azerbaijani position, and now the United States feels that there is another momentum, COP29, this big climate summit, which of course Azerbaijan is interested to use to boost its image in the world, including in the Western world, and Azerbaijan is now speaking about transforming the COP29 into not only summit of climate, but also summit of climate and peace. So, from the United States perspective, two momentum were lost to sign peace agreement by the end of 2022 or by the end of 2023. Now, there is a last momentum, COP29, November 2024. And if this momentum is going to be lost, then nobody knows. First of all, if Trump wins the elections scheduled in November 2024, then definitely a South Caucasus will be less interesting for the United States. But even if Biden administration remains in place, Again, 2025, momentum will be lost, which means that the current status quo between Armenia and Azerbaijan and Armenia and Turkey will continue, which itself means that despite all the potential wish of Armenia to move away from Russia, all the rhetoric, criticism, statements, freeze of membership into CSTO, Armenia will not be able to take real steps to move away from Russia. That is why we see a lot of pressure from the United States on Azerbaijan, also on Turkey, to finally move forward on these peace negotiations, and probably Blinken is telling President Aliyev, OK, you got everything which you couldn't even dream of in 2019. In 2019, maximum which Azerbaijan could dream of was the five regions or maybe the seven regions outside Nagorno-Karabakh itself. But even in 2019, no one in Azerbaijan, including President Aliyev, could not dream of having entire Nagorno-Karabakh with zero Armenians and with zero reactions from anybody in the world and the most importantly, Armenian government, who is fully okay with this situation. So most probably, again, Americans are telling Azerbaijanis, Azerbaijani leadership, that guys, you got what you couldn't dream of, so it's time to sign this peace agreement, whatever this document could be, framework, comprehensive, or whatever. I believe that for the United States, they need even like one-page document, peace agreement, or even named as a document for restoration of bilateral relations, with signature of Armenian and Azerbaijani leaders. And then to send this document to Ankara and tell President Erdogan, OK, Mr. Erdogan, it's time to start normalization of your relation with Armenia. But however, what leverage United States has on Azerbaijan? Because from Azerbaijani perspective, my understanding is that Azerbaijan would like to see Armenia weakened as much as possible. And most probably, Azerbaijan is telling United States, OK, you need Armenia-Azerbaijan peace, to open the way for armenia turkey normalization and to peace of Russia, okay, no problem, but then I have the long list of demands. Please go to Yerevan, force them to accept my demands, and you will have peace agreement. If no, then no. And then, okay, many may argue, but the United States still is the number one power in the world. Yes, unipolar era is over, and the United States is not an absolute hegemon, but still is the number one superpower in the world. How Azerbaijan, this um, tiny country, can resist the United States? But if we look deeper, we see that the uh, United States has no too much leverage on Azerbaijan. Of course, the United States may say, OK, I will put sanctions, personal sanctions against President Aliyev, I will cut off Azerbaijani banks from the SWIFT system, the type of sanctions which we see partly or mostly are being used against Iran and after February 2022 also against Russia. But as of now, it's not realistic. Yes, of course, the United States may use some large-scale new attack of, by Azerbaijan against Armenia to launch the sanctions, but as far as there is a no uh, change of status quo, it would be very difficult for the United States to say, OK, after nine months of ethnic cleansing of Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh, I finally decided to put some sanctions. And if you take off the sanctions off the table, and I'm not speaking about some symbolic sanctions, real sanctions off the table, then the United States has no real leverage on Azerbaijan. 
which brings us to the situation when, despite the United States is interested to have Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia Turkey normalization as soon as possible, but the United States lacks of means to force Azerbaijan to move forward. So, most probably, as far as Azerbaijan and also Turkey is interested to weaken Armenia as much as possible, so that even if there will be change of government in Armenia and some uh, more nationalist people will come to power, Armenia will have zero chances to resist, to resist Azerbaijan. As far as Azerbaijani Turkey position is if, and as far as the United States is not ready to think about real leverage on Azerbaijan, not phone calls, discussions, or whatever, real leverage, whatever this leverage can be, then most probably we will have the status quo continuing. Americans are pushing forward for some peace deal, Azerbaijan putting conditions, telling Americans, okay, go to Yerevan, convince Armenia to accept my conditions, and in that case you will have the peace deal, and this circle may continue and continue. It's all for today, and we will meet soon.